A feature on some of Hitex receivers uh, you're going to want to know about is the SPC port. It's a little indicated uh, uh, port right here. It says SPC on the Optima 7. On the Optima 9, it's actually down here, uh, perpendicular to the, uh, uh, to the actual servo ports. And the SPC port comes from the factory of the plug installed. This is just a little loop back from the positive to the data side um, that tells the receiver that you're not using the SPC port. So if by you know, normal operations, normal hookups, you don't use the SPC port, you want to have that plug in place. And what the SPC port does is allows us to tap into our main battery lead. So if we look at a, a traditional setup or hookup, um, we'll go ahead and ignore this wire for now. You have your main feed coming in from your, your uh, flight pack, your main flight battery. You have your radio connection coming from your BEC or your ESC, and this has an internal BEC or battery eliminator circuit, which allows the uh, main flight pack through a circuit to power the radio system, so you don't need an additional flight battery. It all comes off of the main flight pack. And then, of course, our three wires going out to our brushless uh, um, uh, motor. So traditional hookup is just simply that you connect in the uh, ESC to channel 3, and that's the uh, throttle port. And that would it, that'd be it. You just hook in the rest of your servos off of your different channels, plug this into your main flight pack, and you're ready to go. In fact, we'll go ahead and power up the uh, Aurora 9. And all we do is plug in our main flight pack. And we see that it's, um, it's going to arm the motor. We see that 7.7 .7 volts is our transmitter battery. Which I can touch that 66% or 7.6 volts. Our receiver battery pack, or receiver voltage, is 5 volts. And that's 5 volts being supplied from the, the ESC through that uh, battery limiter circuitry. Now we can touch the receiver voltage, and it shows the current voltage. We can also set a low voltage warning. Right now it's set to 4.5 volts. So if at any reason our BEC uh, falls below, or our, our demand is too high from a radio system to prevent a brownout, um, or, or give early indication before brownout occurs, um, our, our transmitter would send us an alert and tell us, hey, your receiver voltage is falling below the minimum that you set. And you can adjust this. It does give you also maximum and minimum, which you can reset then your max and min for each flight. But that's pretty much it. It just tells you that you, you've got power going to your, to your radio system. But we're going to take advantage of the, um, the uh, SPC port. So inside of your optimum receiver box, you'll receive a little cable right there. It's just a radio connection. looks like a radio connection with uh, two unsoldered wire, unterminated wires. These are tinned, ready for solder. All you do is, is tap this plug or this cable into the, uh, the main power feed. And I left this, this nasty test connector on here uh, just to show you that you, all you do is tap in you know, negative to negative, positive to positive off of your battery lead, your main lead coming into your ESC. Now you could also do this in a small pigtail and put a couple connectors on there so you could remove it and disconnect it if you ever wanted to repurpose the ESC or something like that without having to to desolder, reroute route wires, um, and then likewise, you know, you may want to use uh, this this uh, SPC connected to one of your receivers in another model. So this would save the connection by just setting a little connector up there. But uh, we went ahead and started, uh, hard soldered it in just for this uh, demonstration. So this is connected, and that's what you normally see from from, for example, the uh, the Aurora 9. If we take advantage of the SPC port, all we're going to do is power things down. And then we leave the ESC connection in there because you still need BEC power. You still need radio power uh, for all the servos. Now, if you're, if you're using a, 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 a fuel power plant or a, a large or high voltage setup that doesn't have an integrated BEC into the ESC and you're using an external BEC, again, same thing. Keep that connected to the radio. You're still going to have to run the servos or drive the servos. The SPC port does not drive the servos. So in order to use the SPC port, all you do is remove that factory plug. And then we're going to go ahead and tie in that lead into the SPC port. And then we go ahead and uh, turn our transmitter and reconnect our main flight pack. So that's it. You've got ESC going into channel 3. You've got SPC cable coming out of the main connector. I'm tapping off the main feed into the SPC port. The cool thing is, is this allows you to monitor pack voltages up to 35 volts. So there is a limitation. You want to make sure you're at 35 volts or less on your, uh, on your main flight pack. So we'll go ahead and connect our motor will arm. And now you notice the battery, uh, what used to be the receiver indicator, is now 11.9 volts, showing that I have 11.9 volts in this pack. So I can go ahead and go into there and set low voltage warning. So if, if I'm running a helicopter and I don't have a, a low voltage cutoff set up in my ESC, I never want to drive my pack down below 9 volts or 3 volts per cell. And this is a 3S, a 3, uh, a 3S pack. Now if you're running a course 6S pack in a helicopter, it's going to be 
you know, uh, th three times six as opposed to three times three on this 3S. So you want to just figure out what your minimum voltage is, and then you want to be above that because, like in the in the case of of um, you know, most ESCs, low voltage cutoff is going to be before it gets to nine volts. So you want to figure out what its low voltage cutoff is, and then give yourself you know even a full uh, uh, half a volt or three quarters of a volt higher. Like I can go ahead and run this up to 11.1. Uh, Say if I never run my pack below 11.1. Uh, that gives me plenty of time after warning to bring it down, uh, do a couple of, of, of attempts at a landing and still be safe and well within my voltage. Because keep in mind, when you hit 3 volts per cell or 9 volts on this pack, you know, as you increase power, decrease power, it's going to sag below that. So you never want to take your lipos to under voltage. So you can set that cutoff here. Now it's not actually a cutoff, it's just a warning. So for example, if I run this up, you'll hear it start beeping if my low voltage cutoff is at 11.9 volts where my pack is right now. Now it's kind of dipping in and out at 11.9, so you kind of hear that intermittent or cut up of the warning. But if I run that, um, you know, a little bit higher to 12, very consistent beep. It knows exactly that, uh, you know, we've, we've fallen below minimum voltage. So we can go ahead and drop that back down. And then, as, again, as you use your power plant, keep in mind, you're going to hear this, this warning go off. Say you're coming through a steep climb, you're really pouring the coals to the power. Uh, to the power plant, you're going to dip down below or dip the voltage down as you back off the throttle. Of course, your voltage is going to come back up. That's just the nature of the beast. So you may hear that it warns you a little earlier than what you want to, so you can adjust accordingly based on how your power plant is set up. But that's, it's a really nice, simple thing. You can see the max of 12 volts, minimum 11.9. It'll show you max and min. You can always reset that. If we continue through the different menu options, um, it's going to show the voltage sensor, which would be the telemetry setup. We're not using that and then the uh, current sensor as well. So it's kind of a neat way to just get back or get immediately into those settings uh, to the, uh, the, uh, uh, anything in the battery states from uh, the external telemetry to the internal sensing of the uh, SPC port. But that's it, it's a really simple thing. Now what you're gonna get used to, in fact, we get used to it when we don't have uh, a main pack voltage monitoring built into our receivers, it, it kind of leaves us like a, a little uncomfortable, a little bit of fish out of water. You get used to having some sort of indication to tell you where your main pack is. And when you go back to a traditional receiver that doesn't have that, you kind of feel like you're flying in the blind. Not that, not that we aren't used to it, but it sure is a nice feature. And built into the Optus 7 and Optima 9 receivers, extremely simple to integrate. Again, you can always do a little wire or a connector to be able to make it more modular and plug in, plug out. But just keep in mind, you still got to supply that radio uh, with, uh, with power to be able to drive all the servos. And then you're just adding that SPC port in as an additional monitor. If you go above 35 volts, you're going to have to take advantage of the telemetry system's voltage sensor. So they, you, all you do is add a sensor station into the mix. Um, plug in your sensor station, and then also add in uh, one of your voltage sensors, which uh, is just a real simple installation either through a uh, alligator clip or you know the sensor's pigtail, and you would solder this into the positive lead. Or you can use a connector again. You could wire it off and go into your sensor station with that, and that'll detect above 35 volts all the way up to 100 volts.